All right, we're back. We're halfway home. We have two assumptions left. I just prompted you with the task to react to the following statement. The Packers football record over the last 22 games is 17-5. and five. Based on this record, the Packers are dominating the NFL once again and are playing very good football. Now, I know maybe some of the guys in the class that, that follow football, and, and ladies too, um, probably know uh, because you're an educated football fan that they're not playing good football right now. But to a non-educated football fan, based on that statement, you would probably assume that that's an accurate statement because we know if you have 17 wins and 5 losses, you're doing pretty darn good. Okay. However, there's a problem with that statement. Let's check it out. Let's go to ESPN.com and let's pull up the Packers' current NFL record. Let's go to standings and NFC North. Boom, there they are, Green Bay. They're 2-3 and three this season, okay? That means they've lost more games than they've won. So although over the last 22 games, they're 17-5, and five, pretty darn good, currently they are not playing very well because this season they've lost more games than they've won, okay? This ties into the next assumption we're going to take a look at, which is called accounting period. Okay, again, back to external users. The whole purpose of the assumptions are that these external users, investors, governments, customers, unions, um, they can rely on the financial information that they read on a financial statement. Okay, so external users may assume that when reading financial statements, the figures that they read are reported for a period of 12 months. In addition, when reading financial statements, you can assume that the financial figure, uh, figures shown only occurred in that specific 12-month time period. In other words, uh, if you're reading the financial figures for the year 2011, you can assume that in those figures, there's nothing in there from 2010, there's nothing in there from 2009, nothing in there that they think is going to occur in the future, 2013. It's for that specific time period. In order for a business to change the reporting dates, they have to receive approval from the government and then they have to notify investors of this change in their reports. And I'll show you guys some examples of this in, in a little bit later. Okay, so again, split screen, side by side, uh, table on the left is incorrect, table on the right is correct. Let's take a look at why. Um, if you look at this title here, this shows that the financial figures here are for a period between January 1st of 2010 and January 1st, 2012. So um, we have three years there, 2010, 2011, 2012. Now, these figures are cumulative over a three-year time span. Therefore, since it's cumulative over three years, their assets are going to be really high, their liabilities are probably going to be higher. Now, if we look at the table on the right, this shows financial figures for just 2012. Notice assets is 100,000 on the right table, 350,000 on the left table. It's different, okay? The figures on the right are more accurate because they are the most up-to-date. We can now take this figure from 2012 and we can compare it to how they did in 2011. We can compare it to how they did in 2010. We can compare it to how they did in 20, 2009. We can do the same thing for one of their competitors. How did their competitor do in 2012? How did they do in 2011? How did they do in 2010? You can't do this if the financial figures are reported as a hodgepodge, such as three total years. So by reporting financial figures on a yearly basis, users can easily compare how a company is doing each year. This creates consistency for all businesses and allows the reporting to be simple, clear, understandable, and accurate. Now, under law, businesses have to create two, uh, uh, two, two different times during the year they have to recreate financial reports. Once is every business has to do it per year. This is the big report. Um, that report's mandated by law and that specific report is known as a Form 10-K. Yes, I expect you to know that. The other reports they have to do are quarterly, so every three months. Um, corporations are required to do this by law, and those quarterly reports are known as 10 Qs. 10 Qs. Okay? Now, let's take a look at this in live format. Let's go to yahoo.com. Let's go back to finance, and let's just continue to use Nike as our example, their ticker symbol NKE. Let's pull up one of their financial statements. How about income? And we'll be able to see here right away. We see how they did in 2012. We see how they did in 2011. And now we can see how they did in 2010. 
and corporations are required to list their financial figures um, side by side for multiple years so that external users, whether I'm an investor, a bank, government, again, whomever, anybody outside the company, can easily compare how that business is doing from one year to the next. Um, so let's just go down here to the most important line, the bottom line, also known as net income or profit. In 2010, they had just under $2 billion in net income. In 2011, they had $2.1 billion. And in 2012, they had $2.2 billion. So now because businesses break down their accounting period per year, the lifespan of the business is broken down per year, I can easily compare how they did in 2012 to 2011 to 2010. And now based on this information, I can see, all right, Nike's doing pretty good. Their net income, although not rising a lot, is getting bigger each year from the, uh, the prior year. Okay. Now, if they didn't do this, if they just reported it whenever they wanted, every three years, every two years, every four years, you wouldn't get an accurate sense of how that business is doing because it's not broken down into time periods. All right. Now, let's take a look at one of Nike's competitors. Uh, how about Under Armour? I believe they are UA. Yep. And let's pull up Under Armour's financial statements. And now I want to see how Under Armour did in 2010, 2011, and 2012. Um, now, if you notice here right at the top, Nike's dates were May 31st. Under Armour's dates is December 31st. That's okay. We'll talk more about this. Businesses can choose different start and stop dates as long as those dates are for 12 months and they use the same dates every single year. It doesn't make a difference. So Under Armour decides, all right, we're going to close our books and report on how we did from January 1st to December 31st each year. Nike says, we're going to close our books on uh, May 31st and we're going to report each year how we did from June 1st to May 31st. Both uh, uh, approaches are fine because they each contain 12 months. So now I can go down here to the bottom and we can see that Under Armour made 46 million in 2009, 68 million in 2010, and just under 100 million in 2011. Now I can compare that to Nike. Well, wow, Under Armour only made uh, about 100 million in 2011 and Nike made 2.2 billion. That is a big difference. Now I can better make an informed decision on whether or not I want to invest in this company, give a loan to this company, uh, work for this company, etc., etc. Okay, so back to our example here again. If football teams weren't required to report their records each year, how would you know how well that team is playing? Look at Leiden's football team. We're having a kick butt year. We're, we're what, 7 1 right now? That's awesome. Okay, but if we combine that 7 1 record with our record last year, um, I, I don't know what it was last year, what were we, 6 and 4, 5 and 5, something like that. Obviously, we're playing better this year than we did last year. If that record was combined, we wouldn't have an accurate um, picture of how well we're playing right now because we'd have a lot more losses um, based on last year's performance than this year. So we break it into time periods. Each record gets reset each year, just like the financial statements of a business. So that's the third assumption accounting period.